Hebrew Roots always has some form of two-house theology, almost always. Now, I would say maybe always. And actually, the last show that we did on this, uh, Messianic Faith versus Hebrew Roots Faith, what's the difference? Okay, we had a show on that. You can go check that out. I think it's called Hebrew Roots versus Messianic. Anyway, uh, and I think it's show 99. Anyway, um, we had a show on this, and some guy wrote in, and you can find this in your show notes. Let me see if I can find my show notes real quick. Okay, so um, it's the one called The Barking Fox, What is Torah Anyway? Now, if you go to this, this guy has some what might be considered some decent things to say. He's talking about sanctification through Torah. He's talking about some other things. Uh, that set apart the Hebrew roots. He's not, now, he's not talking about uh, Messianic versus Hebrew roots necessarily. He's, you know, but instantly, one of the first things that he does is references Strong's numbers. So this clearly uh, denotes Hebrew roots in some ways. Uh, and we'll talk about that too in a few seconds. But the point is, is that this guy, whether or not he brings it up or not, whether or not it's blatant, he references a bunch of two-house teachers. And so when when we talk when we've been getting criticism for people like Rico Cortez who now with this definition of of uh Hebrew roots being a two house uh Rico Cortez would be Rico Cortez would be Hebrew roots and a lot of the other people that we've uh criticized uh for blatant error in their theology have been two house as well or have been uh, two house and Hebrew roots as well. So then what's messianic? And this is the this is the thing that I'm starting to realize. Messianic as a whole, whether you and I want to uh, admit it or not, messianic tends to have a theology associated with it. And it's what you were just talking about. The MJAA and the UMJC, they all which are the two biggest groups, uh two biggest international groups within the within the world today that are quote unquote messianic. They all come out of charismatic faith. They all come out of Pentecostal charismatic faith, Christianity. And, and the, yeah, that that Pentecostal charismatic element there um, is what it, it seems hold, to go. It it seems to go with the free will idea, right? Yeah, There's it's our theology. I know by my own experience. Therefore, I must be choosing. Somehow, these are all tied together. And that's the thing is that this lady who on Facebook, she said that she's she had tried a bunch of different churches. She hadn't found anyone who said that we had to, to keep, you know, keep God's commands. Well, honestly, if she's Hebrew roots or Messianic and she's coming out of the church, chances are that she's probably, I mean, maybe not. But maybe I would assume probably Assemblies of God or I would assume Charismatic or Pentecostal in some way. And all these things have done the same thing. Now, not so much in the UMJC, but the MJAA, as well as the Hebrew Roots, they've come out of these charismatic uh, groups, and they have rejected sound scholarship and knowledge. It's about feeling now. It's not, you know, you have all these Hebrew Roots and Messianic people calling uh, seminaries, cemeteries, saying that, uh, you know, the church is way off. Why would you ever learn from these people? All, you know, all this kind of stuff. They're rejecting good biblical scholarship and good biblical practice. And even within the UMJC, when you look at the scholarship of the guys within the UMJ, the head guys within the UMJC who are doing work, uh, you know, writing books, Kinzer, Rudolph, and these guys. Now, granted, these guys are, are super nice guys, and I'm not saying they, they don't love the Lord, but they are not doing due diligence when it comes to scholarship. However, that what they are doing is they're putting forward books like Introduction to Messianic Judaism. So they are the ones who are now they're perpetu they're perpetuating a picture, and that's like why, why that book that that Zondervan book Introduction to Messianic Judaism is really it's kind of a joke on them uh, on Zondervan. They they don't realize it's a it's a, really an introduction to the UMJC. That's right. They, they don't have any diversity of voice. They're yeah, all, but okay, but I, I agree with you, but at the same time... Or very narrow diversity of voice. It's but much the, more broader. But don't you think that the UMJC has the ability to make that? Make that? I mean, they interact in that book with the MJAA as well. And those are the two major Messianic groups. 
when we talk about Messianic Judaism, if we're going to look at the the what I would say is 80 to 90 percent, and maybe I'm way off. I don't have any hard numbers on this. And yes, the the uh, the chat room is now uh, saying that we're we're using way too many blanket statements. I agree, but the question is, is when we use blanket statements like the word messianic, when we use this is exactly what I'm talking to. When we when we talk when we use words like messianic, when we use words like Hebrew roots, the question is, what is the majority of people? out there thinking. Now, I know that it's going to be different when you're talking to someone who's a Christian as opposed to when you're talking to someone who's in either the Hebrew roots or the Messianic movement. However, when we look at the Messianic movement, when we're talking about the two major groups, the MJAA and the UMJC, as those major groups, sure. If they <laughs> if they are the largest and the, and they represent the most uh, the norm or the most of the people within uh within Messianic Judaism, then can't we say that their theology somewhat encapsulates what the majority of Messianic Judaism believes? And if that's the case, if that's the case, then can't we say that the Messianic Hebrew roots is basically holds to an Arminian theology, a free will theology. Now, I know I got friends and uh, we got people who listen to this show who will do it to, uh, to an Arminian theology. So I'm not putting that down. I'm just saying that's not... Oh, let's use a term that's being thrown around a lot now. That's not how I identify right now. I don't identify as Arminian. Now, my dad and I have been talking for the past two weeks, too, about what reform theology is. I can't say that I necessarily agree with reform theology either. Reason being that within the reform theology, what do you have? You have uh, you have a lot of uh, re replacement theology and or covenant theology and or dispensational theology. And I, I basically reject all of those. 